Hey there, I'm John, your go-to solar expert with 15 years of experience in the solar industry. Let's dive into the top 10 solar mistakes first time solar buyers need to avoid. And more importantly, how we can dodge these pitfalls with ease. Stick around till the end because I will discuss batteries at the end. Ready? Let's jump in. Mistake number one is signing up for a free solar program or a government solar program or an electric company solar program at no cost. These offers often come with no out-of-pocket costs and low monthly payments. Sounds great, right? But there is a catch. You're likely signing up for a product known as a solar lease or a solar PPA. That's a power purchase agreement. And they always tend to have an escalating payment clause. Buyers beware. These escalating solar leases are favored by many solar companies because they make them the most money while giving you the lease savings. So how do you avoid this mistake? Some experts suggest steering clear of leases and PPAs altogether. But I think that's a bit short-sighted. You can actually secure a great lease or PPA deal if you're savvy about it. And here's the strategy. Let the solar company make their pitch. Listen to their low monthly payment offer. Ensure this payment is significantly lower than your current electric bill. Then make your move. Tell them you're only interested if that low monthly payment comes with a zero escalator clause, meaning it should never ever go up during the 25 years of that lease or PP. Now watch how they react. Many companies will start backpedaling, saying that it's not possible, or they'll try to reduce the number of solar panels they're offering. Stand firm, insist on the original number of panels and the low monthly payment without an annual escalator. This way, you'll save money from year one and your savings will only grow as your monthly payments stay the same while your neighbor's electric bills keep climbing. Mistake number two, overpaying for your solar panels. Some of you will be buying solar panels outright or with a loan. Both are great options to get best return on your investment. Depending on where you live, you can recover your initial investment within six to 10 years. The math is simple. You get back 30% of the system cost as a tax credit within the first year. Plus many states offer additional incentives like renewable energy credits or state tax credits. And of course, the biggest one will be the reduction in your electric bill. The solar will offset both transmission and generation charges in your bill. In most states, your post-utility bill should only have fixed charges from the utility. In some states like California, these fixed charges are higher, around 35 to 50 a month, but in most states, it's less than 10 bucks a month. The tax credit, the incentives, and your savings from electricity every year quickly add up and you recover your initial investment within six to 10 years. But your savings from electricity and the incentives continue even after you've recovered your money. And this adds up to many thousands of dollars over the life of the solar system. Now to avoid overpaying, get three to four quotes. I can also help you with the free solar quotes as I operate in most states in the US. It's a good practice generally to avoid the lowest offer. Choose one of the offers that best fits your needs. Mistake number three is buying solar when you don't have net metering. Now, in the simplest terms, solar panels, whether leased or purchased or bought with a loan, will only save you money if your electric company gives you credit for the solar electricity being produced by those panels. Now, solar panels produce most of their energy during the Daytime hours, homes have their highest usage in the evenings and nights when solar panels are not working. Thus, all the excess energy generated by solar in the daytime 
flows to the electric company unused by the home. Fortunately, most electric companies offer full credit for all that excess electricity generated during the day. Your evening and nighttime electricity that you now get from the grid as against solar gets offset against those credits which you earned in the daytime. So homeowners don't get billed. This is called net metering. However, some electric companies may not offer net metering. Make sure your electric utility supports net metering. In California, for example, three of their major utility companies, PG&E, SDG&E, and Southern California Edison, no longer off offer net metering. As a result, just buying solar panels in those areas in California is not productive. You will have to buy a battery with solar panels to store the excess energy. Los Angeles Department of Water and Power in the LA area does offer net metering, so you guys are good. Now reach out to me or a local solar company if you're not sure if you have net metering in your location. Mistake number four is getting stuck with fewer panels than you need. This is more common than you think. Many solar companies try to sell you fewer panels than you need because fewer panels means a smaller price tag, easier to sell to you. But here's the problem. After going solar, you will still end up with utility bills. That's a bad feeling. So how do you avoid this mistake? Simple, call your electric company and ask for your last 12 months of electric usage. It's usually in kilowatt hours. Give this information to the solar company, ask them to design a system that produces at least 100% of your annual consumption. And as always, get it from two or three different companies so that you get correct number of panels. Now, adding a few extra panels can give you a cushion for future purchases like maybe you might buy an electric vehicle later. However, normally planning for more than 130% of your current usage isn't a good idea unless you know, you know that you'll need that energy in the, in the future. Because excess energy goes to the grid, they don't pay you anything for it. It's a waste. Mistake number five, low quality or older generation solar panels. Now, solar panels come in a variety of size options, 300 watts, 350, 400, and a lot of brands. Step one is to choose a top tier one brand like REC, SunPower, QCell, Tesla, Panasonic, Silfab, Jinko, Trina, Longi, and a few more. Step two is to make sure you ensure you choose a current model. Most of the current generation panels have watt ratings of 405 watts or more. If your solar company is offering you panels that are either 400 watts or lower, they are likely older generation. There are a lot of YouTube videos, including one that I've made about the best solar panels available today. They're a good resource to check out. Look at them if you want to do more research. Remember, panels 500 watts or more are primarily meant for commercial installations. So avoid those solar panels as they are much bigger and bulkier, and they are really not suitable for home solar roofs. Mistake number six is choosing the wrong inverters. The inverter is arguably the most critical component of the solar system. The highest selling, most efficient inverters in the residential market are the N-phase microinverters and the Solar Edge Optimizer inverter combination. Either one of them are a good choice. String inverters like Fronius, Chin, Sunny Boy, etc. are to be avoided. They'll have lower performance, warranty, and output. I have a video that compares the Enphase versus the Solar Edge technologies for those interested in getting a little bit more into the weeds of solar inverters. Mistake number seven, installing solar on an old roof. Now your solar system is under warranty for 25 years and may easily last 35 to 40 years. So your solar panels will clearly outlast your roof and you will eventually have to remove the panels and install a new roof. The best case scenario is to replace the roof at the end of your 25 year warranty. That means your current roof should not be older than 10 years when you're installing solar. If you do install solar on a 15 or 20 year old roof, 
be prepared to incur an expense of around $5,000 to remove the panels, put them back up again when you're doing the roof replacement. Now, installing solar panels after installing a new roof is an excellent idea. Just remember to give it a month before you install new panels on a new roof. The roof shingles need to settle in and adhere fully to the roof surface. It takes about a month. So don't install panels immediately in a week or two after going solar, after replacing your roof. Mistake number eight is selecting an installation company who might not be there for you when you need them. This is a difficult one. Solar is a long-term investment. Your panels might need servicing up after 20 years. And if your solar company goes out of business, you'll have to work with an expensive third-party repair company. So it makes sense to choose your partner carefully. Larger national and regional players might have longer staying power than smaller local installers. Smaller installers, on the other hand, might offer you more personalized service. But unfortunately, not many of them last the long term. So over the last 15 years, I've kind of steered myself towards the larger nationwide and regional players, primarily because they have the financial muscle to stay the course. Mistake number nine, don't get swayed by companies that come bearing gifts, gift cards, security systems, television sets are all distractions. These gifts are meant to entice you into buying solar from a company that is likely compromising on equipment, warranty, or long-term service commitment. They're likely to grab your business and forget about you. Finally, mistake number 10, the battery dilemma. Should you buy a battery? And if yes, what size? For California residents today, buying a battery in most regions is a must because they don't have net metering. Most other states have net metering available, and in those states, folks have a choice. Solar panels don't have backup capability. In other words, when there's a power outage, the solar panels also stop working, and your home will be without power. So if you're looking for backup power during grid failures, for example, during a storm, you have to invest in a battery or a generator. Batteries are expensive at least 10 to 12,000 for a single unit. And a single unit is able to provide limited home backup. You'll be able to run everything in your home, but larger devices like air conditioners, water heaters, electric ranges, you'll be only be able to run them for very short bursts, maybe an hour or two with a single battery. Single battery will comfortably run your kitchen, TV, lights, office, etc. For a deeper dive into batteries, watch my new video on the latest Powerwall 3 battery. I hope you found this video useful. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more and have a wonderful day.